Plants with Avery. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Capital One acquisition of Discover Financial Services. Yes, this was just announced yesterday, February 19th, 2024. Capital One wants to acquire Discover. Now, of course, it still has to go through the legal process and everything. This deal is scheduled to be complete towards the end of 2024, beginning of 2025, if all things go well on the government front, the legislative front, everything like that, if that's an agreement. I'm going to give my opinion on the deal in that at the end of the video. But first, I want to go into some information about the deal itself and the stocks of Discover and Capital One, as well as the customers of Discover and Capital one what this may mean for you all if you're a customer of one of these companies or both so yes this deal right here is an all stock deal of 35.3 billion in an all stock deal and right here Capital One states that they plan to keep the Discover brand. So Capital One, first let me tell you about Capital One and Discover. In case you're unfamiliar with them, Capital One is a large financial services company. They have three segments that they mainly focus on, credit card, consumer banking, and commercial banking. The credit card segment consists of domestic customer and small business card lending in international card businesses in the UK and Canada. So Capital One, they use Visa and MasterCard heavily with their credit cards. And as far as the largest credit card issuers in the United States, number one is Visa, of course. You've seen the logo, you've got the cards probably in your wallet, in your wallet app, something like that, Visa. Largest credit card issuer, Visa with 312 million cards in circulation. And then you have, of course, MasterCard. You've seen the logo, you know about that. You probably have that in your wallet as well. MasterCard, second largest card issuer in the United States, 266 million cards in circulation. So those are also payment networks. So not only credit card issuers themselves, but they also have a credit card network, which is similar to Discover. Now Discover isn't as large as those two, and I'll get to them, but they have the same process as they offer credit cards and they also offer the payment network. So that's what Capital One is going to be getting as well as part of this deal. So number three largest credit card issuer is Chase. And Chase is owned by who? JP Morgan, which is the largest bank in the United States based on total assets. So yes, and Chase has been the largest credit card issuer outside of Visa and MasterCard since like 2014. So yeah, somewhere around that time, Chase, huge company owned by, you know, JP Morgan Chase, that's the company. So yes, 149 million cards in circulation. So now we have number four, Capital One, around 107 million cards in circulation. Capital One issuing credit cards. Now they don't have a payment network. It's not the Capital One card, like a Visa card or a MasterCard. It's Capital One with Visa or Capital One with MasterCard. However, now with this acquisition of Discover, it's gonna be very interesting to see how larger they become in the credit card space because they'll also have that credit card payment network as well from Discover. Yes, Discover, the seventh largest credit card issuer in the United States with 61 million cards around about in circulation. So that's Discover. And when it comes to their banking side of both of these companies, Capital One is the ninth largest bank in the United States based on total assets. And Discover, you have to scroll down a little bit, but they're still large as well for sure in that space. They are the 27th largest bank in the United States based on total assets. And so the merger of these two companies, which are among the largest in the credit card issuers in the United States, would expand Capital One's credit card offerings and its deposit base. Because when they have Discover, of course, like I stated, they're gonna have that payment network with the credit cards. So you got that, that's huge, that's major. And then also Discover is big in the online banking space. They become bigger than that. And that's one thing with both of these companies have in common as far as having a real focus on online banking and offering you know those high yield savings accounts and other kind of accounts for customers so they have that online focus for sure so capital one shareholders would own 60 percent of this combined company and discover shareholders would own 40 percent of the combined company and a couple of quotes from the ceos of both of these companies they both definitely seem to be on board with this deal the capital one ceo richard fairbank said that the acquisition allows both companies to improve their technology and expand their payment networks. And also, this Capital One CEO stated that through this combination, we're creating a company that is exceptionally well positioned to create significant value for consumers, small businesses, merchants, and shareholders as technology continues to transform the payments and banking marketplace. 
and three of the Discover's board members who have yet to be named will join the Capital One board of directors. And now Discover CEO Michael Rose stated that this agreement underscores the strength of our business and is a testament to the hard work of Discover employees. And he also stated, we look forward to a bright future as part of the Capital One family and to providing expanded opportunities for our loyal customers. So both of the CEOs definitely on board with the acquisition. So that was an NPR article right there with those quotes. Now, another interesting quote from David Schiff, which is West Monroe's head of consumer retail and banking. He stated that Discover has done a better job of bringing in a lot of deposits and has access to a lot of institutions to run the debit card network and provide service so it gives them a lot of deposit gathering ability gives them as far as capital one gives them a lot of deposit gathering ability which particularly in the current market is enormously important and then this article also states that with capital one getting discover which also owns this credit card it's like i was telling you has a credit card network under the same roof as capital one would give capital one bank a major leg up against competing credit card issuing banks such as jp morgan chase bank of america and citigroup which don't process transactions themselves because None of those major companies, even though that's the first, second, and fourth, third, depending on the you know date, largest banks in the United States, definitely JP Morgan, number one, Bank of America, number two, they don't own a credit card payment network, processing network like Visa or MasterCard. So with Capital One owning one of those, with it being discovered, even though it's the smallest of the four major ones in the United States, that still will definitely give them a major boost in that space for sure. And as stated in the CNBC article, it states that Capital One plans to keep the Discover brand. So if you're a customer of Discover, it looks like nothing much may change for you. I mean, your company that you're banking with or that you have a credit card with is going to be bigger, part of something bigger, something like that. So, you know, you may get more features or, you know, better rates here and there, some different things like that. Hopefully that will affect the customer in a good way. Doesn't seem like Capital One is just going to eat up Discover and just make it all Capital One. And if you're a Capital One customer, it doesn't seem like you're going to be like a Discover customer now. You're just going to be part of a bigger financial company. So as of now, it's stating they're still going to keep the brand separate, but it's going to be under one company. So it could just be, you know, like when companies acquire other companies, but it's still that company. That's still that brand, basically. But you're, you know, underneath the umbrella of that company, like, you know, Amazon acquiring Whole Foods. Um, it's not like, you know, you go into a Whole Foods and you're going into an Amazon. Yeah, there's little things there here and there. You're like, oh yeah, there's this is owned by Amazon. You see different little logos, different things like that. But overall, it's still that same brand. Now, they stated a marriage between Capital One and Discover, if approved by regulators, would also give Capital One a new source of revenue from the merchant fees it collects. Because all the credit card companies, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover, they collect merchant fees. Anytime their card is used at anywhere shopping you know you swipe that card you you know tap it whatever you do that company visa mastercard whatever they're getting a percentage a fee from that merchant for them to be able to use that because people want to be able to have you know hey you can use visa mastercard whatever here so you can shop there because a lot of people use the credit cards and everything to swipe and shop however Visa, MasterCard, Discover, all them, they get a fee each time those transactions happen. So now with it being Discover, I'm guessing you're going to see a lot more Capital One Discover cards once this deal goes through. But now when that swipe and that fee goes through, it's going to go back to Discover, which is part of Capital One. So part of Capital One, basically. And this actually states it right here in this article. This deal will likely result in more of his cards getting switched to the Discover network. Like I was thinking, that's what I, one of the main things I started thinking when I found out about this acquisition. With this deal, Discover shareholders would receive 1.0192 Capital One shares for each Discover share that they own. Now, Discover stock has shot up since this news has came out. So before that news came out, that was about a 26% premium for Discover's price of their stock because it closed at around $110.49 on Friday. Monday was President's Day holiday and the market was closed. However, the market is open now as I'm recording this video on Tuesday, February 20th and Discover stock yeah, you see it right there, the jump. It's at $126.74 right now as of the recording of this video. And I'm just gonna go to five day chart so you can see, yeah, it was around that 110 and it shot up with this news. So it's not gonna be as much of a premium now, but it's still a premium because Capital One stock right now is trading at around $138.40. And did it pop up? It didn't really, um, the news of this didn't really do much of it. It had a little dip right there towards the beginning of the day, February 20th, and then recovered very quickly. And now trading a little bit higher, but it hasn't, the news hasn't really, definitely did not affect that as much as it did Discover, because of course Discover is trading less than Capital One. And if you're gonna be getting 1.01 shares, 
then you know that $126 share would be like a hundred and now $38 share. But now when this deal goes through and everything, the stock prices are definitely gonna be different. After the deal goes through, we'll see what happens. Nobody can predict the future, not sure the stock can continue going up and can go down, you know, all that. But this deal is a premium for Discover shareholders and i am a discover shareholder i made a video on it actually back last year it was one of my top three stock buys in october 2023 is google alphabet discover and disney and discover was trading around 80 90 dollars a share or so i've made a follow-up um, as an update on those three stock buys because all of them were making nice gains since those buys right there google around 5.9 percent discover was around 20.49 percent that was when it was trading at 103 30 a share so you see in my average cost was 85 73 and then disney which was up as well around 15 percent is up more than that now is over 100 dollars a share but yeah this video of course talking about discover which now discovers trading at 126 dollars and 90 cents a share my average cost 85 73 so right now current gain of 48.06 percent with this news built into the price because the stock has definitely jumped because of it. So yes, so Capital One shareholders would own 60% of this combined company and Discover shareholders would own 40% of the combined company. If you're a shareholder like me, what does this mean for you? Already, you know, you see the appreciation of the stock price. So for sure, you're probably at a gain on the stock right now. So I'm not selling personally, I'm still holding. I wish I would have bought more, of course. It's always like that with a lot of stocks. I've been like, wish I would have bought more. I still could because right now, it could be kind of like an arbitrage situation here when you're kind of like, Buying a stock, you know, pretty much is going to get acquired and it's trading lower than what the price is going to get acquired at. Kind of like, you know, how Warren Buffett did with Activision and Microsoft, where he was buying Activision, you know, around the deal and Microsoft was acquiring them for higher than the stock price of what he was buying it for. And other people were doing that as well. So you kind of could do something like that here. I may look into that. But with this deal, like, for example, if you had, let's get the calculator up. So if you had 100 shares of Discover, so you get 100 shares of the Discover, and now you're gonna get 1.0192 shares of Capital One for each share of Discover you own. So you're just gonna times that, times whatever however many amount of shares of Discover you own. So we're gonna times that 100 times 1.0192, and that's gonna equal 101 shares, 0.92. So you will get a fractional amount of this. They're not gonna round it down, round it up. You're getting a fractional amount, typically, unless you somehow land on a whole number. So now those 100 shares of Discovery you own are going to be 101.92 shares of Capital One. So, so 100 shares of Discover trading at where it's at now, 127.04. So a total amount of your stock right there is $12,704. That's 100 shares of Discover trading at where it's trading at now. That's how much you would have if you sold all of it or just just that's how much it is worth in cash, you know, dollars, whatever, how you want to say it. So with the acquisition, though, you have one hundred and one point nine two shares of Capital One. Now, Capital One is trading higher than Discovery it was before the deal. It still is now with the news of this deal, because, you know, the articles were stating at the time of close of Friday with Discover because the market was closed on Monday. It was about a trade. This, this deal was giving a premium of around 27 percent. That's staying right there. 26 percent is the article staying right here. So 26, 27 percent, depending on where the stock is at, kind of bouncing around. So that a premium is what you're getting for Discover shareholders because Capital One stock trades higher than Discover. So in this situation, now you have you had 100 shares of Discover. Now you have 101.92 shares of Capital One. We're going to times that amount of shares towards what Capital One is trading at now. As of this recording, $138.54. So now with that in mind, you have $14,119.99. We'll just round it up. $14,120. So yeah, you have over $10,000 more and money right there just from this acquisition so you still got a premium this was even before you know this is even with the news cooked in of that discover shareholder price chances are if you already are a discover shareholder you got it before you know this jump up in price so you're already up even more you know even if you just bought the stock on friday you know when it was trading at 110 if you bought it before then back when i was buying it back last year around 80 90 dollars a share and then you're even up even more like like i've shown you how i am so yeah this deal is giving a premium to Discover shareholders. So I would think a lot of Discover shareholders are going to like this deal. They already like it. They're seeing their you know portfolio. Now, typically with something like this, this stock may continue, Discover stock may continue going up and trade closer around about to where Capital One is at. Because if this deal goes through, then you're basically going to be getting Capital One shares at 1.01. .01. It's almost a one per one, but you're still going to be getting Capital One shares, which are trading higher than Discover. So like right now, even if you bought 
you know, Discover 126 and Capital One's at 138, then you're pretty much still getting a premium. However, that's not saying that these stock prices are going to stay the same when this deal goes through. And after it goes through, we'll see about that when it's going to happen. It's going to be very interesting to see this one. Now, if this acquisition happens, my opinion on this is that I think regulators should allow this acquisition to happen. Now, yes, it's two major financial networks, but if they're wanting to, you know, help out competition. I think they stated, I've seen some articles that Joe Biden he had some kind of a in competition law agreement, something like that, where he's trying to you know increase competition basically in different spaces. I think the financial space is one of them. Now, this would increase the competition. Some people are saying that that may hinder this deal because it may, you know, decrease competition because you got, you know, two large, you know, financial services company combining. So there's less competition right there. But I believe this would be more competition. Now, it's kind of a one of its kind in this situation because you have a large bank, not the largest, not the top three, top four, but you have a large bank number. What was it? Nine in total assets for Capital One? Yes, nine combining with a large credit card issue, which is also a bank as well has that segment. Now, I personally think they should let the deal go through because it would increase competition across the financial space. And also it makes sense with these two companies. They both have a big online focus. And that's where a lot of competition is going through right now with major retail banks, we'll call them. More the you know brick and mortar banks, the Bank of America, the JP Morgan Chase, the Wells Fargo, the ones that have the physical locations. They still rely on that a lot and getting customers through the door right there to open up new accounts and things like that. However, they've been getting more online because they know that's where a lot of people are going to. They want to be able to check out their account on the app and online and different things like that. This deal would increase Capital One's presence in the online space even more. And of course, Discover having them in there and would also compete against Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo even more. Now, it is going to take a hit some maybe to other banks that are in the online space. They're trying to grow like, you know, SoFi, Ally, two banks I like a lot, but it also may spur some mergers acquisition in that space. You know, you have all those kind of smaller online banks that have been growing, especially in this last couple of years with the high yield savings accounts. And I make videos on those. Definitely check that out. Link in the description. You want to know about more about that. But yeah, so that's going to increase maybe some merger acquisition in that space, which will increase competition as well. And maybe, you know, kind of spur some of that going up against the bigger banks and the payment networks and the spaces and things like that. So it's going to be interesting to see if this acquisition goes through. I'm thinking it will, and I believe it should. However, you know, we shall see towards the end of 2024, 2025 beginnings, when it should go through and everything. Got a lot of paperwork, a lot of legal mumbo jumbo, all that's got to go through and everything. And so that is going to be interesting. I think it should go through. I think it's going to be good for the financial space if it does go through. And, you know, maybe we'll see JP Morgan Chase or Bank of America, someone try to buy Visa or MasterCard, you know, after this. We'll shall see, you know, I mean, hey, you let those guys do it. Now let us do it. I mean, that would be, let's just, you know, I'm, I'm kind of interested in market cap. So JP Morgan Chase has a market cap of 517.55 billion. So yeah, you see how much larger they are compared to Capital One with their market cap. Bank of America, same thing. Market cap, 268.79 billion market cap. Large banks. So yeah, and Capital One, just a reminder, market cap right there, Capital One, 52.58 billion. So major as well, but compared to those other two major banks, yeah. But now Visa, let's check out their market cap. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that would be, that would be, wow. So Visa's market cap, 551.84 billion. Going back to JP Morgan, largest bank in the United States, 517.55 billion. So, you know, never mind on that. I didn't, I knew JP Morgan was the largest bank in the United States, but I did not realize Visa was that big. I'm not a shareholder of Visa. I know there are some prominent shareholders in Visa. And I, see, I mean, I see the chart. I see why, you know, it's one of those I wish I would have got in, of course, but I was starting to look around other parts and I got in Discover instead. I was like, I should have a credit card issue in my portfolio. And I got in Discover, which was definitely worked out great in this situation. But so MasterCard market cap, 422.28 billion. So major, yeah, it would not be something that JP Morgan even could buy. I mean, yeah, they, it, I mean, yeah, they're bigger than MasterCard, but not that much bigger. And Visa is bigger than JP Morgan. And Bank of America, yeah, they're huge, but they're not as big as MasterCard or Visa when it comes to market cap. So, yeah, oh, this deal does go through. There's not really anybody that could buy MasterCard or Visa, but definitely Discover is in the range that would be acquirable by many large banks. And obviously, Capital One, it definitely would have been um, by JP Morgan or Bank of America. I wonder if they're going to be like, oh, man, we should have done that, you know, because <laughs> that definitely would make them even bigger for sure, even though they're large already.
So now I just want to see American Express. So American Express market cap 153.66 billion. So just curious about that. And also on the note of our, when it comes to shares and just thinking of these banks and financial institutions, one of the largest shareholders in Capital One is Warren Buffett, who is also one of the largest shareholders in American Express and Bank of America. So that is just something interesting as well. He's going to have you know, he's really got this locked down on this financial sector. And a lot of big financial companies right there are under the umbrella of Warren Buffett's portfolio as well. So that is interesting. So, yeah, that's what I think. I think the deal should still go through. I think it would be interesting. And of course, I like it as a Discover shareholder. If I was a Capital One shareholder, I would like it as well. As a customer, I've been a customer actually of both of these companies. And I've had good experiences with Capital One and Discover. So, I mean, I think it's kind of neat to see two banks like this to have an online focus that have had good customer service. I've had at least experience. I know other people have as well. Having these companies focus on different consumer segments with this online presence would be a stronger brand and a stronger company for both of them. So it makes sense why both of them would want to merge together or for Capital One to acquire Discover. So, yeah, that is it with the video on the Capital One acquisition of Discover Financial Services. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Take care.